Hiya! So in this video, we're going to be looking at sampling, but without replacement. So in other words, we're going to look at our marble. Every time we take a marble or a bag of marbles, every time we take a marble out, we leave it out. We don't put it back into the bag. Um, so obviously, if we think about this, um, we should get a much better, um, like if we pull out all the marbles, we'll know exactly what it is. Uh, but the idea is, well, what happens if we don't pull out all the marbles? Um, can we get a good estimate of what is what was originally in the bag kind of thing? Um, so we'll set up exactly just as before. Um, what we have is, in this case, not a sequence, we have an ordering, right? So in this case, because each time we pull something out, we don't put it back in, so we can't re-choose the same marble. So each entry is going to be different, and we're pulling out a small n of them, right? And so what we have is... Um, so we have n individuals, and we pull out n samples. And since we're not pulling them out, we get an ordering of n elements out of n individuals, little n elements out of big n intervals. Remember how we kind of had this notation? Um, it's not super standard, but it, the book uses it, so it's a little easier um, in that regard. There's no standard notation from what I know. Um, but we have this um, kind of formula. So this we had before. Uh, and so let's kind of look at um, what we have. So we'll, we'll, we're going to look at the second question. And this is if we already know the probability in the large population. So we already know what big R is. So we're not looking at the first question here because if we want to know how many things are in the bag, well, we're j we can just pull out any of them. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's it's going to be really like it's kind of pointless for us right now. Uh, but we'll, we might get back to it some other time. For now, what we're really going to ask, if we already know the probability in the large population, what is the probability of getting um, of getting the same probability in n pools? So this also will give us information on the larger population if we do get a subset. Uh, so, so here, we'll look at this example again. So what we have is um, n marbles. R of them are going to be red, and we'll let the rest of them be blue. We know that the probability is given by R over n. Um, and we're going to pull out n marbles without replacement. So we're not going to put the marbles back in. We leave them out. And the question is, what is the probability that r of them are red? So what's the probability that um, we pull a little r of them being red? Um, well, let's kind of look at this one at a time. So the first time I pull a red out, um, like we let's actually look at um, what happens if I pull only red for a while and then only blue for a while. So say I pull the first R, um, the first R we pull are going to be red, and then we'll let the rest N minus R be blue. Um, so let's see what happens. So in this case, the first one I pull out, I had an R over N chance of pulling that out. First um, red, right? So this is red. The second one, well, I've removed one red, and I've removed one um, red. So here, this is the chance for pulling out another red. And if I keep pulling out reds, what I'm going to end up with is going all the way down to pulling out R reds, right? This is kind of what we said when we said we pull R reds. So this one is red as well, right? So R times. Now the rest of them are going to be blue. So at this point, we now start calculating the blue. Do I have room here? Yeah, I have room here. Um, so what we have is, well, now I on the denominator, I have n minus r, right? Because I've removed r of them already. Um, and on the top, now I have b objects that I'm going to be pulling from. And again, if I just pull one out at a time, what I end up getting is this is minus, in this case, we do have n minus r, so whatever the remainder is, um, plus 1. And then here we have n minus r minus uh, n minus r plus 1. So here, if you look at this denominator, this little denominator here, this is just n minus n plus 1, which is what we would expect, right? We pulled n things all together. And each one of these were blue pools, right? Blue, blue, blue. So if we multiply these together, we get exactly kind of what we want, right? So we end up getting, um, well, let's look at what we have here. 
up top what we have is um, so on top we have here I'll write this down on top we have r times r minus 1 all the way up to r of r minus r plus 1 right so we have this I'll put these in little cloaks uh, and then we multiply by so what we can do yeah so here what I'll do is this if you notice this is just going to be r factorial over r minus r factorial right because I can do um, maybe I should write this on this side so you can kind of see what I'm doing here is here if I divide by r factorial um, sorry not r factorial r minus r factorial right because here if I do r minus r r minus r r minus r minus 1 r minus r minus 1 all the way down to 1 these will just cancel right so I can do it this way and I can do the same thing for the blue so blue we had blue times blue minus 1 all the way down to blue times uh, minus n minus r plus 1 so this is just blue factorial minus um, b minus n minus r and then n on the bottom it's a very similar thing we get n times n minus 1 but notice how we keep going from here right so we go from uh, n minus r plus 1 and we keep going to n minus r n minus r minus 1 and we're going to end up with all the way to n minus n plus 1 so we end up with uh, n minus n plus 1 so here we get n factorial over n minus n factorial so putting these three together what we end up having is do I have room here not really so we'll do it here so all of these together um, gives me uh, this part let's see so this is uh, so this red this we saw already right this is our order r for the blue this is blue um, and then n minus r right and then the n here I guess I did it in green so we'll do this this is n and then n on the bottom right and so what we end up having is we can just do this multiplication so we have r r times b r it's b n minus r divided by n n so this is what we kind of get. And this actually gives us the total probability that we want. So the probability of grabbing R reds in N pulls, like we pull out um, R N times. Well, if you think about this, right? So this is just one option. This is red R times and then blue the rest of the time. But we can take any permutation of these, right? I can move these around without any problem right all of these different possibilities are possible um but it's not just permutation right permutation is slightly the wrong way of thinking about this because each of these things is um the same right so if i take two reds and i permute them that's the same thing so permutation isn't right here instead a combination what we want is we want all of our things and we're going to say make these ones red and make the other ones blue so the first thing we did is we said the first n are red and the rest are blue. So what we'll do in this case is we'll say, okay, just choose any of them being red and then make the rest blue. Notice how I said the word choose, which means we're probably going to want to choose these things. So the probability of this is n choose r of them to be red. And then we have the formula from above. Uh, oops, this is r. Uh, B n minus r. Um, over uh, n n. Now the cool thing is I'm not going to show this, uh, but if you really want to have fun and test your knowledge out, this is also can be written in this way. R choose R times B choose n minus R divided by n choose n, which is kind of a cool way of looking at it. It gives you um, a different way of looking at things. Um, you can prove this equality. I won't show it. Uh, but it's a fun little thing to show. 
uh, this video is already sufficiently long, so I will stop here. Um, and I will see you in the next uh, video for what's called random variables. So I'll see you then.